I did that right. I mean, did I hit screen record? Is that working? Because yesterday it's messed up. And then I had to go into settings and there's an option that says do not disturb. But still, with testing that around, um, we'll see. Sometimes messages still come through, sometimes they don't. I guess that's working. Is that on record too? Mm -hmm. Oh, are we double timing this? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Morning. You guys, <laughs> all the articles, it's already like I cannot keep up. I can't keep up anymore with, with where it's going to hit next, you know? I'll just wait for a few more people to jump on. Oh, hi, Brianne. How's it going? How are you doing? I want more, uh, more updates, too, on, on how your detox is going for you guys. And if you need another bottle, just let me know. Okay. I am trying this uh, tiramisu. So it's that company called Nobility. They they didn't take over Tivana. They like replaced a lot of where those Tivana locations are because Tivana, I think, ended up selling to Starbucks or something. And um, and so anyway, I went in there like last month, and they were sampling out all these teas. And so there's this uh, organic. He mixed the black Earl Grey with tiramisu. And the tiramisu is like mostly pecan, but oh my gosh, it's so good. Like the, it just smells incredible and it's so tasty. So I just do half and half. But the only thing with these organic teas and you have to do them this way is that sometimes you get those loose pieces in there and, and I don't know, then I'm going to end up getting them on my teeth or something. But, but how's, how's the mouth breaks? I'm wondering about these places. Now I'm like, I'm kind of jealous. Like how many of you were seeing the, uh, the outbreaks in the movie theaters being like, I wish my kids were there. Like how do I, all these measles cases in America and if I'm trying to plan up like a, a gathering, you know how we used to have those chicken pox parties, but if you want to do a, a measles party, where are you at? Where are all of you kids at? Because this natural immunity thing is sounding pretty good right about now. I don't know about you, but... I'm really interested in why are they holding out on us? <laughs> All these measles cases and they are holding out. They're not even, you know, showing themselves or at least, hey, P.S., we got the measles here in the house. Bring the kids over, you know. Monica says, I told my sister to call me if she gets it, right? I'm wondering, I'm wondering what you can buy tea bags to make your own little tea bags. Oh, yeah, that's probably better than the tea balls. I just heard that the bags are, um, are we really are we talking about tea bags today in the morning? Um, I just heard that the, the bags sometimes, it really depends, even the or those ones that you get from Whole Foods, wasn't there that scandal that happened a couple of years back where they can hold like mold or something like that? The, the, all those bags are made like in China, but... But you know what? Send me that information with that company because if they're, if they're made in the USA, probably. Okay, wait, what's Robin saying? If you catch measles from someone shedding, do you still get lifelong immunity? No, I, I'm going to... I'm not sure on that one because what you're catching is the, the vaccine virus. You're catching the, the atypical measles. Which, which to them is not the measles. It's atypical measles is the measles from the vaccine, which... So uh, you're not getting the best stuff is what I guess where I'm going. But, um, you know, if you guys have this book, which I finally got in. Thank you, Erin. I was trying to order this book from Amazon for over a year. Okay. It's an amazing book. It's got over 400 scientific papers, studies in there. They're all cited and um, all peer reviewed. And it's very interesting, especially when you get around the 300s, you have a lot of studies here that talk about um, women who are significantly less likely to develop cancers, especially ovarian cancers, if they go through the mumps naturally, the measles naturally. And, and people are, uh, are in denial about all of this stuff, but you've had articles on 
believe it or not, places like CNN admitting that the measles is used in cancer treatments, that they actually use that. So if you get it naturally and you contract it naturally, especially in childhood, um, and your body goes through that, your chances of cancer are actually decreased. Look at this. Women were, who contracted mumps in childhood significantly less likely to develop ovarian cancer as adults. This study is um, from the West RO, the epi epidemiologic, uh, epidemiologic study of malignancies of the ovaries, cancer in, in 1966, uh, 1000 to 107. The study compared 97 women with ovarian malignancies to 97 women with benign ovarian tumors. Several variables were analyzed to determine if there were any significant differences between the two groups. The women with b benign ovarian tumors were statistically more likely than women with ovarian malignancies to have contracted mumps earlier in life. Um, and so they're listing all of the different studies that talk about that. And you've got adults who've had previous infections to influenza, measles, mumps, or chicken pox, natural, uh, are less likely to develop malignant melanoma. So even with skin cancers. So then ask yourself, why are they pushing so hard for all of us to get this crap vaccine that's not even the real thing? It's not even the real immunity. But, um, you know, I, I mean, it's a Friday. I didn't want to make today's talk to, I mean, because the last two talks we did yesterday were quite intense. And I, I had a few of you saying, no, no, don't pull any more stuff because you still, you, you feel like you've got a lot on your plate right now to look up. Um, and, and I know that the, uh, the porn talk was a big hit. Um, so Chris, Chris Kirkhoff, he's actually more uh, active on Facebook. So when I say to follow him, you know, check out his posts on Facebook. They're truther posts. And he's, he's got over, I mean, he has the max amount of friends already, but he has, I, I, I think, at least 30,000 followers or more um, that people who just hit the follow button. And you can tell this guy's being censored. He... He will do, like last year when he was posting, he, those things were getting shared thousands of times. You'd have like a thousand shares on a post. Now, um, you know, with his post, you'll see like 82 shares, 90 shares. And you're just like, dude, they, they got this guy. They're definitely following him um, and his post. But whatever. I love that he continues to do it. I love that he's not scared and he's pretty much giving, giving the Nazi books a big middle finger at this point. So, um, so yeah, with, with the post yesterday, you guys, oh, try Barnes and Noble for Miller's review. Yeah. Um, I was already about to go to the bookstore. What happened is I tried to place the order on Amazon over a year ago and they, I even got the message, your, your order shipped. And I was like, okay, great. But then a week went by and then I got another message, uh, that, it was like, sorry, we couldn't deliver this one thing. Like I would order four different things and then that, and everything else made it to my house. But then they would say, sorry, you, we couldn't get this one to you. And usually they'll allow you to reorder another one or, but it was literally just like, we just couldn't. And then I tried it again a week la after that, two months in, I was like, where is this book? And I go on to the account they're like, oh, it, it just never made it out. I'm like, what is going on? So, of course, I shared that a few times on here. It, and I still couldn't order it from my Amazon. It's been over a year. I can't order it on my Amazon account. But I had the lovely Erin on here send me a copy. She just mailed it to me. She's like, here. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> so now I finally have a copy. Um, I've been talking about wanting this book. And I know like so many of you went and were able to get it even before me. Um, because I'm Feb, I ordered it and I got that one. What Feb? What do you mean you're Feb? I just couldn't. And oh, Planet Patterson. Yeah, it happened with a few. It wasn't just this title. It was a few other, it was a few other titles. Also the autism epidemic never made its way here. So, oh, in February. Oh, okay. Well, so I know that then it did get on back order, but I never got a notification just saying it's back ordered, you're on a list or nothing like that. It was just like they actually took my money, like they charged it and then were like, oh, here's your money back. We didn't ship it. So yeah. 
Um, okay, I get that. I get it now. I get it now, Liz. <laughs> but it, it happened with a few titles, and so we'll see. Amazingly, the Merc manuals made it. I got the Merc ones. I got this one was able to come in. I don't think that they... I got this one from, the, from 1950, that 8th edition Merc manual. My son was like, is that your Bible? I'm like, I don't know. Maybe now these days it seems like, like it's a Bible. But um, pretty good stuff in here. I think uh, very interesting what's happening is that we have a generation now of people who you're afraid of what you don't understand. You're afraid of something that you don't know how to cure. We have parents in 2019 that are afraid of the fever, okay? And they, they are because they, they, will, they will message me. They will run to the ER at 101. What were you watching in life? What indoctrination was happening that you don't know what to do with your kid when they have a fever? And it's okay to own up to that and admit like, look, I don't know what to do when my kid has a fever. I had a point like that too. When I, when I had Amelia, her first fever, we were like, shoot, what do we do with this? We are so conditioned that the first thing is, if I don't know what to do with this child, I have to call a doctor. I have to call a doctor, a doctor who doesn't know your kid, okay? And, and that is kind of where we're at right now. This is why there's hysteria. It, it sound, some people are like, oh, that sounds so messed up to say. You got, I mean, I, I posted that there's really an epidemic of parents who don't know how to handle a rash and a cold for a week, because it's the truth. It's the truth. We do not have a measles epidemic in this country. I mean, if you don't have the measles, PSA, okay, if you don't currently have the measles, you cannot spread the measles. I think, uh, I, I just, why? Why can't the public understand that? And it is deep. To say to just say, well, the fluoride's doing its, its job. That is the answer, but it is deep. You have to you have to take that and really think about it. Everything around us with the GMOs is calcifying, and it is making us. Um, it, 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 we're, we're being enabled, and we are we are only counting on the system to help us with everything. You have parents that just don't know how to be parents. Why, why can't we, you know, please get to the point where you can first admit that. Once you can admit that, the rest of this stuff does get a little bit easier to absorb. Um, another PSA, if you have the measles, maybe stay home. What does this say about how deathly and dangerous the measles is that people are going to the movie theaters while they have the measles, possibly have the measles? And what kind of garbage journalism is that when you're putting out headlines that say the word possibly, why are you reporting this? There's this great clip of, um, of Denzel Washington where he's being asked on, a, on the red carpet by a reporter about some scandal that didn't even happen, that, that would just like, was just breaking news. And it was like, he, the way he responded to, to the reporter was, was brilliant. And he's, he's saying, you know, you guys, and he was talking to all of the news crew. He's like, you have a responsibility to deliver the news to people, not, not to be the first to deliver the news, which is what you're all doing. You want, you want to get first on that headline and you want and, and how many of us are, are guilty of that as well you know it's like when you first hear news you're immediately like you know b before checking the sources and i i have a tendency to also want to do that and when i when i'm wrong i'm wrong and i'll post about it but it's like why is that in us to to uh to report that way versus okay let me sit back first and let's like review the entire thing like this jet blue thing happened earlier in the week and it was like it just looked so staged so i was like i'm i'm just not quite ready to call it what it is but the video does look pretty terrible for jet blue and i hope that they if if they haven't already um report on on uh, what what actually happened there or at least their side and then tell me tell us the public what 
uh, what they're going to do to reconcile and to make the situation a little bit better. But you got Fox News here, okay? Because I, I talk bad about all of them. People are like, oh, you're always trashing on CNN. Well, CNN does it to themselves. But, <laughs> but I, I talk bad about all of the sources, trust me. Um, this is what they had posted. And, and look at this headline. Avengers, Endgame, moviegoers possibly infected with the measles. Okay, that's, and then an AMC sign. Like, that's kind of irresponsible reporting, don't you think? I mean, using the word possibly? Well, wait a minute, journalist. Who was this journalist? Uh, oh, wait, Kevin Winter was the guy that provided the picture. So let's not blame Kevin Winter. Um, what? What what would it take for you to have taken an extra two to five minutes? Because it's different when we do it. I'm, I'm, I'm Talia sitting in her house in Vegas. I'm not, you know, I shouldn't be. I hope your news source. <laughs> um, but but Fox News, you're you're calling yourself the news, and and what would it have been for you to take an extra two minutes to find out if there was indeed at least one moviegoer that was infected with the measles. What even is that reporting? What is it? Was it, did they or did they not? And how did this make it to print? Thank goodness. You know what I think it is? I think what it is, is that um, it's no longer newspapers that we're all here reading in the morning. Right, uh, with we, you know, with our breakfast, that's what our parents used to do. They had the news in the morning, their papers, and then at night they'd have like the thirty-minute segment right before David Letterman or Jay Leno. But now, now we have just the unlimited internet, where all you got to do is put a headline, a picture, and millions can see what you're putting out there. They don't have to like go out on their way to go buy their, you know, fresh bread for the day and then stop at the newsstand and pick up because at least if they had to do that, you would have taken the time to report properly. News back then was also still very, um, uh, knowing our history now, you're just kind of like, wow, what did they do? It's just that now we're getting news from left and right. It's just all over the place. So what's happening with all of these um, art articles like this and headlines, and I posted yesterday on the Scientology one on the cruise ship, and I'm sorry, you guys, by this point, you know, it was already Thursday night from the week, and I just couldn't anymore. So many of us in the movement were just tagging each other to just jump on there and just laugh. Like, just, you know, we weren't even going to go. Usually we'll jump on these forums and we'll actually post links and sources, and, but this one was just funny. It was just like, okay, okay, you know, this is a group of people who believe that they're immortal and, you know, that they're these spiritual beings that, um, so I just feel like the measles thing is maybe not on there. And, and, and then it was like, you start typing something out and then you just retract it all and you're like, no, because I'm not even going to feed into this. This is crap. Um, but what, so what's happening is, Jet Blue, a cruise ship, movie theaters. Where's the measles going to be next? Target? They're thinking oh, a football stadium? Who's going to call it? Come on, let's start placing bets. Let's start placing bets. Maybe in Vegas. Maybe on the Strip. Because tens of thousands of people come here um, in the hopes of winning big money. And they're here so, you know, like, that, that place is littered. All kinds of weather throughout the year. It's just filled with people. Let's do it there. Okay, where's the next outbreak going to be? Where? Because what happened is, though those in charge realized that we were done buying that bullshit of it's just public schools where things can spread. You know, because that's where they were getting you. That's where the threat was. If you are not vaccinated, your children cannot go to public schools. Oh, okay, so you're telling us that if we don't go along with your poison schedule, we don't get to go to your indoctrination center. Is that what you're saying? So many parents were calling them out, like we were discussing last week. I said, call them out, show your hand, hit them where it hurts. 
Get your kids out of those school systems because they're going to lose money. The state will lose money. The school will lose money every day for every kid that is not in school daily. It's at least $100. That's why they care if your kid misses school. So pull them out, hit them there, and then you're going to hit pharma too because if your kid is no longer on poison schedule, no, they're not getting their money. The pediatrician's not getting the, This pediatrician that thinks they're firing you is the one that's not getting compensated. So pull them out. And now they're realizing, okay, my goodness, these homeschooling movements are blossoming. There are parents that are just saying, F you. My kids are way better off just with me literally learning nothing in academia. And, they, you know, if, if all I taught my kid was, to, was how to grow a garden, they're better off. Um, because the system is broken. It sucks. So it's like it dawned on them, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Now we got to get all these public places. We got to hit all of these places. There's going to be a, there's going to be something in the church. Watch. It's going to happen too with the church. Um, but, but right. Like, so where was this theater? Where was this theater so that we can all just get that natural immunity because we know that the virus from the vaccine sucks because it doesn't work because you need boosters, you know, the irony in the movie being called end game. Maybe the measles outbreak was Thanos' plan all along. Maybe it was his plan. My computer might have a virus now. Our computer viruses, those damn anti-vaxxers. <laughs> I mean, since when is possibly the news? So you've got just the Scientology cruise ship. Can you imagine? You're on a cruise ship, and first of all, they were trying to quarantine the cruise ship. They're going to now bring live virus vaccines that shed. Section 5.4 on the MMR itself. And I love Anderson Cooper. The, the doctor on the boat is calling for 100, 100 measles vaccines to be delivered. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you subject all these people to shedding? Okay, and they're already stuck on a cruise ship with Scientologists. Can you imagine? You're on a cruise ship with Scientologists. We, we talked about the, the alcohol the other day, but let's just say you're not a Scientologist. Like, there's not even drinking on this boat. What kind of cruise is this? <laughs> what kind of cruise is this? Like, what kind of, what kind of um, entertainment are they getting? Is it just Tom Cruise flick after Tom Cruise flick? Is the Tom Cruise of the cruises cruising on the ocean seas? It's just too, there were too many things there. You're like, no, no. Because even after they inject you with their MMR, that thing takes 10 to 12 days to kick in if it even works. So tell me, what are, we, what are you doing on this boat? What are you doing on this boat? And just, it was insane seeing all the comments come in, even from the pro-vaxxers, because pro-vaxxers were just like, yep, good, karma, let the boat go down, like that they didn't even care. Like, I don't know, maybe it's like, is this what's going to bring everybody together? Just this like confusion on Scientology to begin with? <laughs> I'm sorry, but I could not take that one seriously. I couldn't, but you know they're hitting up all the things and they're hitting up all the religions, okay? Maybe they'll go after Muslims next. We'll see. They, 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 they don't. It's such, a, it's such a like touchy thing to talk about uh, Muslims because half this country doesn't realize that it's not a, it's not a race, it's a belief system. Uh, Islam is, if, if, it's like if you, if you follow your Bible and you believe in Christianity, that makes you a Christian, okay? But so how many people in the world can be Christian? Every race can be Christian. Every race. Christians are not just from North, North America. It's every race can be Christian. Why do people understand that? Why do people understand that every race can join Scientology? Every race can be Catholic. It's, well, you're, oh, it's open to everyone. Well, same with Islam. And the confusion, just the same morons that don't understand the difference between legal and illegal immigrants. Like, so first of all, you have to understand that that half of the country just doesn't understand that difference. They just don't understand the difference. They never will. 
And so you got Islam. And if you believe in that, that makes you a Muslim. Now you can be anything and be a Muslim. It's not just people from the Middle East. Okay? The majority are from the Middle East, but it's not just that. And this country won't even touch it. And I'm anxious to see them do it because many Muslims and in the Muslim Brotherhood Association and all of that stuff, they have brochures. And I shared that on here. I think it might still be in my religious highlight. I have two religious highlights, but I shared that brochure that they made where all the reasons why Muslims do not vaccinate. And I just cannot wait for these leftist, Islam loving, you know, but, but whitey hating people to, to get a hold of that because they're so pushy on the measles vaccine too. I just can't wait to hear what they say because I would have these same people and this, this topic has nothing to do with the vaccines anyway, but I'd have the same people Okay, the, the, the feminist pro-abortion, like those girls, those girls that, that I just can't believe I even was acquaintances with at one point in my life. I'd have these same people who would be the first to chastise and the first to uh, hate on the Christian baker that doesn't want to bake the cake for the gay wedding, okay? And at the same time, turn a blind eye if it was a Muslim baker who doesn't want to bake that same cake for that same wedding. Don't go after the Muslims. Don't in this country. You better not do it or you're a racist, even though it's not a race. So, yeah, and that that insult to me. In the span of three weeks, I have been insulted with, okay, Latino. (laughs) And then I've been called white privileged. So it's great. And I save those. I save them. They make me feel all like warm inside. <laughs> this country's something else. Oh, well, you know, you're brown, Talia. You should, you should support illegals and da, da. Uh, No, no, first of all, all the no's. Um, my, we did come here the legal way. It took freaking 15 years. My father slept outside of the INS building in LA before it was Skid Row, thank God, so he didn't catch typhus. He had to do that twice uh, on a sleeping bag. He had to petition over and over. We never came here illegally. He was sponsored to come out here through his church and to go to school out here. So it's called getting a student visa that eventually became a worker's visa. Then that became a green card. And then we were able to petition ourselves. It took the decade or so for us to at least fall in love with the culture here in America. We wanted to assimilate. We weren't trying to bring in values from our country and force it onto other people. We were very much in love with this country and that's the the process that we went through okay there was never a time where it was like the status was illegal it was called a line like it was called a line at one point you know but now looking into it i'm thinking my goodness had my dad just not done any of that had we just done it all illegally i probably could have gone to college for free like i probably could have gotten all the grants you know because apparently doing things the right way is garbage already in this country. That, that didn't matter. So, so what are you saying to me that just because I'm brown, I should just accept everything that pours in? No, don't say that to me. I'm actually more offended that I, when I was taking my test for citizenship, many people don't realize this. I was turning 18. Okay, so I had already been going to college. I remember, not college, sorry. Been going to indoctrination centers in America for since 1991. So since first grade, I, I did the whole thing. First to 12th grade, you know, American schooling. And I sit down and before, when they were getting the petition, I was about to get my citizenship. It was a really exciting day for the family. 15 years in the making, you know. Um, I... I had to take a test and they asked me 
who was the first president of the United States. So I had to tell them. And then they asked me um, a couple other questions that were just so basic. And here's the funny one. They had me spell out, they, they told me a sentence. So he goes, I'm going to give you a sentence and I want you to write it down and spell it correctly. And I was like, okay, what's that sentence? And he goes, they sell their horses on their farm. And I was like, so I wrote it out. And thankfully I passed, okay? I passed. And what's so aggravating, and this is why I did for like the next decade of my life, I'm going to be like, you know, I'm not proud of this. Because now I'm like, Talia, you were just... So, but seriously, for a decade of my life, I became grammar Nazi online because all my American friends who don't know the difference between there, there, and there, your and your, two and two, oh, you guys bother me. You bother me so badly because apparently uh, I was under the stress, like, if I don't know the difference, I can't be a citizen in this country. So if you still in your 30s, don't know the difference between there, there, and there, shame, shame, I will say it, shame on you, because <laughs> I had to know, okay, I had to know, it bothers me, it bothers me, there was a guy that I just couldn't go on a second date with because he did not know the difference between two and two, I was, I remembered our first date, our first date at like a Dave and Buster's in LA and he's also a Gemini and Gemini guys are psycho so that also was already like oh this isn't gonna work and then he just I was like I was talking to him I was sharing that story and then he I, I asked him a, qu a couple questions it was always quizzing this guy and he was like I go no okay you understand though when it's like the two O's right the two O's means that there's an addition and he was like no I mean there's not much of a difference who cares about that stuff I was like oh what do you mean who cares about that stuff? There's a huge difference. <laughs> the date didn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere. Um, but it's okay. He was still, um, that was still in a time. So dating back then, there was not, no phones. I still had a flip phone at the time. So it was also in a time where the guys um, paid for everything still anyways. And it was just expected. So, so that's all right. I hear nowadays that couples split. Like people are actually splitting. Like what is that? I wouldn't leave my house and go on a date. I just sound so old. I seriously sound so old. This is why I just would never make it. Jeff cannot die. Um, so <laughs> these are adults, adult people, adult human beings that don't know the difference. And not only that they don't know the difference, they don't want to know the difference. They don't want to know the difference. Missed his chance? No, he's probably like, actually, he's a lawyer now. <laughs> he's a lawyer now. I think he still follows my posts. You know, anyway, we could talk about that stuff another day. But, um, okay, so we now have uh, the, the measles in, in every, like here, here, newsflash, the measles is contagious. The measles spreads if you have it. If you don't know what to do with a child who has the measles, you're going to be afraid about the measles. I guarantee you, if you don't know what to do with a kid who has the chicken pox, the chicken pox is going to scare you. That is by design. Um, but, but we have a, uh, we have to understand, you guys, the society that we're living in right now is so screwed up, okay? We're not interested in anything in terms of like bettering ourselves. So we're literally destroying everything around us due to, you know, depression, due to, like, you guys, we've made it acceptable that we have crap in our drinking water, and that's okay. And it's like, there's crap in the drinking water. Everything should stop. Everything in this country should come to a halt, you guys. There is in the water, especially in L.A., and it's not just, it's cancer-causing ingredients. Uh, arsenic is in the water. Hello, country. Hello, America. Stop everything. There is in the water and arsenic. Stop everything. We got to fix this first. But what's happening is nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. 
Nobody cares. Oh, I think I said that kind of loud. My neighbors are like, we're walking over there. They probably heard it. It's okay. They should know. They should know that there's crap in the water. <laughs> okay. And we are accepting this. We're going, oh, yep, crap in the water. Oh, but wait, you guys, there's measles in some theater. Do you guys hear about that? There's like measles in this theater. Maybe. That's crazy, right? What's going on? Like, what's going on? We're, we're, um, there, there's a, a notion here too where it's kind of like you, if, if most of the population doesn't care, can we be like jiving off of, um, of, of that, like maybe on a, on a, on another level, like that we, we also now in turn start hating ourselves and hating our planet because we are continuing to destroy ourselves, the planet, and we're letting the psychos run the show. The psychos of the world, we're like not just voting them in, we're just like letting them do it. You know, why are people having kids? Why are people having kids anymore if you're going to just depend on the iPad to raise them and, and leave them to the state for education and you don't want to breastfeed them. Like why, why, why did you have this kid breast? And then you're going to make it like breastfeeding is such a chore and, and pumping and feeding this child the proper and most nutritious thing is like a hindrance on you. And, and it's all this like me, 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 um, self selfish, time that we're living in why did we have why did we have these children if they're just going to be a burden and you got so many people that really just like hate their lives they hate their lives and they're just numbing up day in and day out so so this is how this is how a possible case of the measles in a movie theater is news bigger news and it's infuriating more people than the fact that there's poison in their water source. It's, it's seriously madness. It's really just insane. Um, and, and okay, I, I, I had to quickly address this too. Every time I talk about like the, the decalcifying and how you could do that and the whole fluoride thing and, and how they call the, the pineal gland your third eye. Um, you know, I get a lot of Christians who will message in and just be like, isn't that, and the whole thing with like the meditating in the third eye, isn't that like against the Bible? And guys, I'm not telling you to go and, and get all chakra and do all of those things. Like I don't do that stuff, but, but can we understand this? Like to not cal to not try to decalcify if you are, how do I word this? Fluoride is an artificial worldly thing that is trapped in your body. Specifically here, a lot of the buildup is here. So is it unchristianly to want to get that out? Because it's unworldly. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's artificial and it's of the world, last I checked has nothing to do, because I literally will have Christians that are like, I don't want anything to do with this third eye stuff. I just feel like that's of the, like, hold on. Okay, forget the third eye thing. I'm telling you that you have heavy metal toxins trapped in your system from the, from the world, not from heaven above. Do you want them in you or not? And if removing them to you means getting into like a, you know, I don't know. I'm, my, my, my dad is, uh, he's also a pastor and I've asked him about this. I'm like, hey, if I, if I were to go to a yoga class or do yoga, is that like not Christianly? Because I'll have Christians, the same Christians that don't want me to watch an episode of Harry Potter because it's not, you know. And he'll just be like, you know, if it depends on why you're doing the yoga. If you're doing the yoga and meditating for like to chime in and get into like Buddha and th then that's different. But if you're doing it for health because you want to stretch and you want to get to a place where you can, maybe the word meditate is wrong, but every morning Christians, you know, if you're able to spend even 10 to 15 minutes alone in silence, but with your Bibles, um, some people would look at that as like, oh, you meditate on the Bible. You're meditating on the word. You're, but that has nothing to do with 
it's interesting. It's like people are either looking way too much into something or not enough into something. Um, but but just just to set the record straight, because uh, I don't get the time to to answer in on those, especially when the comments are running through. Look at right now, some have uh, opening the third eye is different than removing fluoride from the body. <laughs> right, right, and um, <laughs> and so so let's just. Yeah, I'm not like trying to wear this up. And actually, you know, I not unknowingly though, because of the society we're living in right now, uh, or not just right now, but for a while, I I looked through a lot of my t-shirts, shirts that I was like, oh, these are pajama shirts, you know, that would have symbolism that I was like, I just bought this shirt because it was comfy or because it was a cute top. Or I was like, this is a Vans shirt. I love Vans, you know, a lot of people don't know, but Jeff was in, in retail for a really long time. He would manage Vans and um, like the shoes. And like, I loved a lot of their tops, but quite a few of the ones I had, had the whole, um, you know, Illuminati symbols on there, the third eye thing. And I never thought twice about it. I was wearing this stuff, not thinking that I'm like on this other crusade of, no, I was just like, oh, it's a comfy top. But but now, because I'm aware of the symbols, I'm like, okay, I can't, I don't want to. I don't want to wear that, and I'm like, ugh. But you guys, for those that are too overly righteous in that sense, like, how are you spending money then? Because it's on your dollars. <laughs> it's on your money. So it's really hard to, to get completely out of that, you know, um, just, just with everything. I'm trying to like not use this and more like this. I was always like, okay, but then realizing. Um, the stories that the employees have are really dark. And like when you walk into that place, the, the air is thick and it's not thick because of the smoke. It's thick for other reasons. You don't, you don't feel settled in there, especially, um, I, I keep hearing this from a lot of Christians that go and they'll like go into there for a little bit just to see the structure and they're just like, oh my gosh, I felt some people will go and they'll stay for like an afternoon and they'll come back and they'll feel sick. They're physically sick after being in that place and there's symbolism everywhere. So you wake up to, um, you, you wake up to that when you're, when you're suddenly aware of like all of it. You're just like, oh my gosh, it's all over the place. It really is. So, so it, it's hard. And I had a mom who got really into it too. And she's like, you know, even those fidget spinners, you know why they design them like that? Cause your kid has to hold them like this. So in the way that they're holding them, they're doing this. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like my, <laughs> my kids just spin those things. And she's like, well, there's a reason. I'm like, oh my gosh. Who was it that told me that? Who told me that? I don't know if I'll out you on here because she watches a lot of these lives and I love her though. But I was like, man, some people are into it so deep, so deep. Meanwhile, I'm over here just like, hmm. Okay, you guys, the, the commune thing, it's got to happen soon, okay? I'm looking up a lot of land, but... I'm trying to get this, I, I, want, I need to get this practice because I can't lie to myself. We were going to get, this is embarrassing, I'm going to just show you guys anyway. Um, it looks terrible out there because I haven't done anything with it. We were going to get artificial grass because we're like, maybe we'll rent this place when we leave, um, you know, when we finally go to wherever, our place in the Ozarks or wherever. And I was like, let's just rent this house and it's Vegas and I don't want to deal with grass. And so artificial grass seems to be the way to go. Then I discovered um, back in December, the whole earth and grounding thing, which we talked about. Currently, my backyard looks like just hell because I got so depressed when I was like, but I want to ground to the earth and I, you can't do that on artificial grass. And not only that, when the, when the sun heats up the artificial grass, it's that plastic. So your kids are playing on plastic and it's chemical. So now my backyard situation is embarrassing. It looks like this, okay? 
This is, it just looks like this. And it's, it's terrible. I'm like giving up on it. I haven't really given up on it though because now I'm like, I want real grass. And then I started researching all the people in the desert and desert type climates that successfully get real grass. So tomorrow we're gonna be putting real grass here. And where I'm going with this is, um, and now I got other issues because the guy who came here to do the quote and all the measuring yesterday, he's like, okay, so you know you're in the desert. I'm like, yes. He goes, so even if we install the sprinkler stuff, um, how do you want a spraying? I was like, I don't want any sprays. I don't want any chemical sprays. He goes, okay, so what are you gonna do about the black widows? And I was like, what black widows? You guys, this is literally after we already signed contract with this guy. I was like, what black widows? He goes, you're gonna get black widows because it's real grass and there's like real dirt. And thankfully in your neighborhood here, because it's like guard gated, you, you guys don't have issues with rattlesnakes, but what are you gonna do about the scorpions? And I was like, what scorpions? And he goes, because when you get dirt and grass in the desert, you're gonna deal with scorpions. And, and I came to this realization, you guys, where I was like, how would I live in Montana where I thought maybe my biggest fear and trouble would be the bears? I want the wide open thing for my kids to run out and ground to the earth. But does that mean that, does that mean that I have to go out there every day and like check? Because that sucks too. That sucks too. And people are like, yes. So my friend who went and got all the grass, like she has real grass done and she's in like a desert area in California up past Victorville. She's like, she's like, yeah, I have to check it because we get rattlesnakes and we get baby rattlers. And I'm like, what? I don't know if I'm ready for that. Now I'm like, maybe I should have just gone with the artificial grass. But then here's the thing. If I can't handle just 900 square feet worth of grass, then maybe I'm not ready for the like 500 acres in Montana, right? Right? You guys aren't uplifting me here at all. You're, you're probably like, she's not ready. She can't do it. Yes, I can. No, I can't. Black widows, you guys, those are deadly. There's no vaccines for black widows. <laughs> Not that I would get one anyway, but I'm just saying. So then I'm like looking up these sprays where they're like, it's safe. It's safe after it's been sprayed though for 20 minutes and you could spray it along like the walls, but I'm like, it's still chemical bomb spray. But do I want the spiders? I don't want the spiders. This is frustrating. I'm coming anyways. It was a really sad, depressing realization because they're going to be doing that this weekend. And I'm like excited about the grass because I'm like, I just wanted to ground. And I was also schooling the guy because the guy was looking at me like, why don't you just get artificial? And then I was, and you know, Jeff, I, at that point, like walked back into the house because he's like, she's going to go off on freaking grounding and earthing. And I did. I was like, oh, well, because you know that when you ground to the earth and you're, he was just like, oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, like, but I, I, it's okay. I planted that seed, you know, cause then he was all about, he was all about like trying to school me and educate me on, on the grass and how it will thrive. Even in the desert, many people just don't realize that like the same people that are getting artificial grass are having to, in the hot summers, water their artificial grass anyways. So when their, their whole thing is they don't want to waste water, you're wasting water. You have to water artificial grass. What is the point? And artificial grass is like 20 degrees hotter. So if we have a day in the summer that's 110, that grass will burn my children unless I water it down completely. It would be at 130 degrees, like no thank you. So anyways, this sucks. Cause I'm like, I, I'm like, maybe I could be out there and then I could do like my stretching and do the things that are like different for me. And I don't wanna go out there. So there's gonna be freaking bugs and snakes and spiders and sh stuff. Dang it. But maybe I will. Maybe I'm able to just take some CBD. Just like scour the area. I was doing a maternity shoot on Sunday 
in San Diego, not realizing it was like springtime in San Diego. And we, I was walking with this family in this like beautiful brook stream area. And we were like, and I, I'm walking up, leading the way, and I'm stepping over these rocks. And then the mom, who's like 20 weeks pregnant, is like, oh my gosh, Talia, you just walked past a rattlesnake. And I was like, what? Threw my hands up, had like my camera and all my equipment with me. And I was just like, no, 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 where is it? Where is it? I can't look. I can't look it. If I see the snake, I can't. If I see the snake, I'm going to lose it. Like, I will lose it. Guys, I'm not ready. These are the things. These are the things where I'm like, I'm not ready to live off the grid. I am ready to live in a bunker, though, somewhere. Like, I could live inside a bunker underneath a house, like in Blast from the Past style. That I can do. I'd rather do that. As long as it's, like, really sealed up all the sides, I don't think, I just, you guys, it's just these sad realizations I came to, okay? I guess I'll end it with here. I was talking yesterday about the, um, the leveling up, right? I was like, you guys know that there's levels to being woke. So I don't, <laughs> dude, you're going to work yourself into wine o'clock. <laughs> seriously, seriously, and now I'm supposed to not drink wine? Okay. So yesterday I got off track and I was talking about how when you first start in this movement and, and if you guys checked out my blog, it's, it's taliyalikeitis.com, but you'll see like from years and years ago, I have these blog posts where I'm talking about SB277 and all of the, you know, because I'm in my learning phases and you'll, you'll understand it if you read it. I had some blogs where I was like, yes, even though in the past vaccines did help us, and then I'm reading that going, no, they didn't. Oh, this girl, she's so young and naive. She didn't know. But I was like on my levels of waking up. So let's just talk about levels really quick. And you tell me where you're at. Because I'm going to tell you, I was like level 1 to 13 where I was. Okay? So here's level 1. Here's level 1 to waking up. There are risks involved. And if there's a risk, there should be a choice. I'll support whatever parents want to do. But don't tell me what I, what I should do with my child. Okay, that's level one. <laughs> Hi, Nicole. These are just my personal levels. Yours might be different. Okay, level two, how I used to think. Okay, well, in the beginning, vaccines saved lives, and they were definitely needed in a time when we didn't have proper sewage and sanitation. But now that we have these things along with the railroad and way to ship produce like lemons and limes in the winter months, you know, maybe they're just not needed. Okay, that, that's level two. <laughs> then I got to level three. Okay, I'll support them maybe if they can make them green. Like, let's green these vaccines. Let's, make, let's demand safe vaccines, you know, um, just like the campaign of Robert Kennedy Jr. And if we can make them organic, then maybe we'll support this. Okay? Then I got to level four. Wait a minute. How do you make fluoride, formaldehyde, and aluminum organic? And, and why do we even need human DNA and animal DNA injected into our systems? Why do we need these things? Whose idea was this? Okay, then I got to level five. I said, wow. Okay, yeah, so they didn't save anyone or anything, and they were actually just designed to keep our immune systems dependent on their products forever. Because if the syringe is not going to kill us, it's going to make us dependent. And they've been dirtying up our blood this entire time. They're dirtying it up. Because why? Because they're keeping the masters from the slaves. That's why. All right. Then I leveled up to six. I said, they're deliberately creating calcified repeaters who are going to line up for this poison. They're normalizing the abuse. They're not trying to cure world hunger. They're delivering poison and what? And, and, and they're delivering the poison to these kids, not water and food. They're poisoning the food, the air, and the water. And they're keeping us so distracted because they own the news. They're pitting us against one another. It's never been us against us. It's always been us against them. And they know this. All right, so what am I on now? Level seven. We have always been enslaved. We think we have a choice, but we don't. Our children are not our children, and we're just legal guardians, but their health and their future decisions belong to the state. And that was a very depressing level, okay? That level, I think I took a break. I was like, wine education. I'm going to get into wine education. <laughs> okay, level eight. Do I live in the matrix knowing all of these things? 
Or do I exit the matrix knowing that life will never be the same and that I will be off the grid relying on just myself and my immediate family? And then who am I going to take with us? Because my kids can't just grow up together. That's going to be weird and could get incestuous and I don't want it to get to that. So I got to wake up just a few more families. Maybe just choose a few more amazing families, start the commune, and we'll do it that way. All right, then I got to... There is no off the grid. Every inch of this land is owned and taxable. Even I'm a taxable entity, which is why my social security and birth certificate are, that's what they're deeming. And Nicole freaking validated that for me. I am worth more dead than alive. Population control is real. The elites want six billion people gone to get to the number that they deem suitable for maintaining balance to this earth, which is 500,000 people. Okay, that was a hard level too. All right, then I got to a level 10, which is a kind of a dark place. I said, even if I do all that I can to make it to the 500,000 by avoiding as much poison as possible that's being thrown my way, and let's just say, let's just say that by God's grace, I make it to that count, what type of world will I be subject to and is life even worth living if I'm microchipped and owned? Because if every move I make has to be approved, and if I disobey, then my accounts are going to be frozen, and my family is taken away from me. Gosh, that morbid list just goes on and on. Okay, so then I got to, like, depressed. The levels are not like this, okay? By the way, it's not level one like this. It's, like, level one to level third. It's like this, okay? Okay, so church, level level, level 11. Church. I'm going to continue with prayer. I'm going to go to church because God is in control and only he can understand why the road needs to be crooked. Thank you, dad. Only he can make it straight. But wait a minute. All the churches are corrupt as well. Churches are in bed with big pharma. You got pastors promoting the flu shot. What even is this? (laughs) Okay, but well, be the church. Jesus said to be the walking church of Christ. You don't need to go to a structure. You are the church. You are the one sending out the God. You don't need to go to a building, a building with windowless walls and stuck in this. You don't need to go there, okay? They're shooting up churches anyway. And now they're going to shoot up the people in there differently. So I got to level 12. I was like, okay, a relationship then, just a relationship with Jesus Christ so he can guide me through this never-ending ordeal of life that is hell on earth, Jesus, come quick. Got to that. Okay. And this is where I'm at right now. You guys want to know what, what, what level 13 looks like this. All right. Survival of the fittest. Bring it. Bring it on. <laughs> that's where I'm at. I don't know about you, but that's level 13 for me. And I know that there are more levels that I could mention. It's going to be an ongoing thing. This endless abyss of why are people so evil? Putting my burdens back onto him because we got to get the stress off of us. He wants our stress. He doesn't want us to live in stress. I don't know how some people can do this without him. Okay? I don't know how some people can do this without him, honestly. I don't know how you can function. But that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at. Sorry if you came on here looking for... um, (laughs) Looking for, like, a way to make it through. Because I'm at this level 13. But if you're not there yet, I just want to tell you, level up. Level it up. And I will uh, leave this on, on the blog, my, my levels, and maybe we could just join in together. Because that's what's happening. That's what's happening. I'm on my way now. i got to go to Sprouts and go spend way too much money on organic produce. And then I have to rinse it still because it's likely got pesticides on it anyway. All right. Follow up with some scripture right now. End my lives with some scripture. Okay, guys? We'll chat soon. Nicole, you're way past. Nicole, I don't even want to ever get to the level you're at. P.S. But I love you. (laughs) Okay. We'll chat soon, guys. Have an amazing Friday if you can. Bring it. Bring it, Big Pharma. We don't care anymore.